Hi friends, it's Miss Melissa here with our Trailblazers week four. And this week we're gonna be talking about this white stuff that we've had outside for several weeks now. It starts with the letter S and it's called snow. So we're talking about snow and what happens when there's a lot of snow all at once. When there's a big snowstorm and a bunch of snow falls at once, we call that a blizzard. So we're talking about snow and blizzards this week. And the first book I have to read to you this week is called Blizzard by Caldecott honoree John Rocco. So John Rocco is the author. And this story actually is based on a true story. So it's something that happened to the author a long time ago when he was a boy. So it says, one day when I was a young boy, nearly four feet of snow fell from the sky. And this is my story. You can see he's got a yardstick there in his hand. I know when it, we've had a lot of snow, I go out and I put a yardstick in the snow to measure how much we have. The first flake fell right before recess, and it was followed by many, many more. The wind whipped up and school closed early. By the time my sister and I got home, the snow was already over our boots. We know what that's like here, don't we? We've had a lot of snow recently. The snow continued to fall through the night and I thought it would never stop. You can see that stop sign there. Snow is almost covering up the sign. That's a lot of snow. The next day was Tuesday, and the next morning the snow drifts were so high we couldn't open our front door. So we went out the window instead. And I know one morning I went outside after it had snowed here and I couldn't get my back door open. I kept hitting the snow with the door and it wouldn't open. We laughed as we sank deep into the frozen powder. Walking was hard. It was like trying to move through white quicksand. Every few steps I had to stop and rest. It was even too deep for our sled. And this little bubble here, it says, we need sled dogs. Dogs to pull the sled. When we went back inside, we were cold, wet, and tired. We made camp by the wood stove and our feet tingled as we sipped hot cocoa made with milk. And I'm sure that you guys, if you've been out playing in the snow, you've experienced that. Go outside and play and then when you come in, all your clothes are wet and your feet and your hands are cold. Take all your wet clothes off and sit inside in the warm and have a little hot chocolate. In fact, in your activity pack that I sent home with you, there's a pack of hot chocolate so you can make a hot chocolate after you've played outside in the snow. The third day was Wednesday. And on the third day, Dad shoveled the driveway so he could get the car out when the snow plows came. We dug tunnels and secret rooms under the snow. An igloo, an igloo can keep you warm in sub-zero temperatures. And you can see the igloo they made here. It's a little room underneath the snow. And it seems like an igloo would be cold, but it can actually help keep you warm when it's really, really cold out. 
And look how deep that snow is there where dad is shoveling there at the driveway. It's a lot of snow. I think that might even be more snow than we had recently. By day four, the snow plow still hadn't come. I wondered if we'd ever see the grass again. Inside, things got tense as our food started to run out. I knew we couldn't survive much longer on cocoa made with water. We need to get to the store, but the roads aren't plowed and we certainly can't walk through this. What do we do? Can't walk, can't sled, can't take the car because the roads aren't plowed and they're running out of food. We have a problem, don't we? Friday. On day five, I realized it was up to me to take action. I was the only one who had memorized the survival guide. I was the only one who knew what equipment was required. It's like he's gathering his equipment. He's got a hockey stick and a tennis racket. And I see the dog holding the racket there. What's he gonna do with that racket, the tennis racket? Hmm. I was the only one light enough to walk on top of the snow. I see what he's doing with those tennis rackets. He made snowshoes out of them. The snowshoes help you walk on top of the snow so that you don't sink down through it. On day six, I made a list. Milk, bread, eggs, and a candy bar. I prepared the sled and then I set off. So there's his list. There he goes. He's got a long, cold journey ahead of him, doesn't he? My usual landmarks were covered by snowdrifts. And it looks like he went to some different neighbor's houses. It says, I managed to check in with neighbors on my long journey. And the neighbors are telling them different things that they need. This guy needs candles. This guy needs cat food. This one needs coffee. This one needs peanut butter. And here the pages will open out so that you can see more. You can see a map of the journey the boy took. Checked in with the neighbors. Helped build a snowman over here in the corner. Climbed a lookout went the wrong way. And if you follow the tracks, you can see where he had to turn around. Oh, I'm getting hit here. So you can see he had to turn around because he went the wrong way. Right here, he made a snow angel and explored an igloo. You see the igloo there? Joined a snowball fight. And then here's the market. He says, I made it. He had a big, long journey. I can't even hold it all open to show you. Big, long journey. At last, I reached the store. I was tired, hungry, and chilled to the bone. But I couldn't think about myself. I was on a mission. Remember, he had all those things he had to get for his family, but then he had the things he had to get for the neighbors too. And the man at the store asked, are you gonna carry this all by yourself? Yes, sir, I said, I've got my sled. So there's the store owners. And the lady is on the phone there. She's actually talking to the boy's mom and she, and she says, yes, he's on his way back now. So the lady called his mom to tell him, tell them that 
He's on his way home. You don't have to worry, he made it. On the return trip, I raced to drop off the groceries before the sun went down. Grateful smiles and cheers gave me the energy I needed to make it back home. And the cat says, meow. Remember he had the neighbor who needed cat food? I think it was food for that cat. I think the cat's meowing, thank you. That night we all had hot cocoa made with milk and it had never tasted better. But there was something else we still needed. And here he's telling his family about his journey. And here in the in the uh, word bubble, it says, it was a perilous journey. There was something else we still needed, snow plows. It looked as though we would see civilization again after all. And there's the snow plow. It finally came on Sunday, seven days later. There was so much snow that it took seven days for the snow plows to come. The kids say, oh, I guess we'll have to go back to school tomorrow. And this other kid says, boo. And the mom here says, I was going stir crazy. Thank heaven. We had survived the blizzard. That's a big sledding snow pile, isn't it? In fact, I think that's probably even more snow than we've seen here this year. So here's a little bit, a note from the author. So remember this story that the author wrote was based on a true story that he actually lived through when he was a boy. And here's some interesting information. So the blizzard of 1978. On Monday, February 6, 1978, New England experienced one of the biggest snowstorms in its history. It snowed for two days, and by the time it stopped, parts of Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Connecticut were buried under 40 inches of snow. That's over three feet. That's four times the height of this book. So it's like taking this book and stacking it four times. That's how much snow there was. The wind was blowing 50 miles an hour and created snow drifts up to 15 feet high. Where I grew up in Rhode Island, it took over a week for snow plows to get to our street. This book is based on my experience as a 10 year old boy in that blizzard and how I got to the store over a mile from my house with tennis rackets tied to my feet. So this is his true story of what he went through in the blizzard of 1978. I hope you enjoyed the story from our author. I have one more book about blizzards that I wanted to share with you. This one is called Whiteout, a book about blizzards. And this book is actually gonna tell you some things that can help keep you safe during a blizzard. Because the blizzard, not only is there a lot of snow, but there can be a lot of wind. Sometimes the power goes out during blizzards. So this is some things that can help keep you safe. It's called Whiteout. Here's our table of contents. Table of contents aren't in every book, but sometimes books have them. And what the table of contents tells you is it gives you an outline of the different parts of the book, and then it'll actually tell you what page number to find that information on. Table of contents can be a very useful thing when you're reading books. Blue gray clouds creep into the sky. Windows grow, glow in the growing darkness. You are leaving school early because a blizzard is on the way. It will be a long ride home in the blowing snow. So either school gets canceled or sometimes you have to leave school early because of blizzards. Driving in a blizzard is very dangerous. And that's sometimes why we don't have school when it snows because driving in the snow and in the blizzard can be dangerous. Busy windshield wipers keep shoving aside the heavy flakes. Streets and roads are carpeted in thick snow. 
The snow turns to slush under car tires, and the slick slush makes the car slip and slide. It's a lot of alliteration, slick, slush, slip, and slide. They all have that slew sound at the beginning. The winds blow harder, more snow falls. The world becomes a wall of white, up, down, sideways. Everything looks the same. The blowing snow has turned into a blinding whiteout. So sometimes the snow can be so heavy and the, the wind can blow the snow in so many different ways that you can't see anything, which makes driving even harder to do. And when you can't see anything but snow, that's called a whiteout. It's extremely dangerous to drive in a whiteout. And then when the road gets all slick and slushy, it's hard for the cars to drive on it. We are stranded. Whoop. The car slides into a soft, thick snowbank. The wheels are stuck. We're stranded by the blizzard. Now, if this happens, it's safer to stay in the car than to step outside in a freezing whiteout. Call 911 from a cell phone or wait for help. Tow trucks, snow plows, and highway troopers are cruising the streets looking for drivers in trouble. So if it happens to you, stay in the car and call for help from a phone. There's people out and they will come to help you if you just stay put. What's that? Headlights gleam faintly through the snow. A patrol car has stopped to help us. And we're home at last. Snowflakes keep drifting past the window. Snowflakes fall when the temperature is close to 30 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. The warmer the temperature, the bigger the flakes. Watch the flakes stream past the light of a street light. The flakes are small and powdery. The air is growing colder. So I didn't know that. The warmer it is, the bigger the snowflakes. The colder it is, the smaller the snowflakes that fall from the sky. The next morning, school has been canceled. The house shudders against the moaning wind. Ooh. Window panes rattle. Snow blows through the yard in thick white blasts. The air is so full of snow that you can barely see the houses across the street. The blizzard is still going strong. A blizzard is a fierce combination of wind and snow. Winds blow at more than 35 miles per hour. That's faster than a car on a street. Snow either showers down from storm clouds or is picked up from the ground by bone chilling blasts of wind. Blizzards bring low visibility, so that means you can't see very far during the blizzard. In a blizzard, a person can only see as far as 400 yards or foot, four football fields away. Sudden gusts of snow block your vision even more. In severe blizzards, people are unable to see their hands in front of their, face, or their faces. So they call this the whiteout. When you can't even see your hand with low visibility, it's called the whiteout. You try to open the back door to let out the dog, but the door feels stuck. Outside, the wind has piled up a heavy drift of snow that almost reaches the doorknob. Television announcers warn that the blizzard could last for several days. Oh my goodness. But at least this kiddo is safe inside their house. The thermometer outside shows the temperature is 30 degrees. It's not terribly cold, but wind blowing against your skin makes cold air feel even colder. That's called the wind chill. This morning, with wind gusts of 40 miles per hour, the wind chill is only 13 degrees above zero. When you step outside, you'll feel 17 degrees colder than the thermometer shows. Frostbite is when temperature freeze, temperatures freeze your skin. Hands and ears can turn white. 
or you could lose the feeling in your fingers. If you go outside, cover up in layers of warm clothing, especially cover your fingers, ears, and nose. So it's especially important when there's a lot of wind and it's cold out to make sure you cover yourself. You don't wanna get frostbite. The next day, school has been canceled again. The blizzard is gone, but it has left behind a world of light. It will take a full day to remove snow from streets and driveways. Then school buses can drive safely again. School is closed, but there is plenty of work to do. The driveway and the sidewalks need to be cleared. After that, a snowman can be built. Snowshoes and shovels and your dog are waiting for you by the back door. How many of you had to do some shoveling here the last few weeks? We had a lot of shoveling to do at our house. All that snow, it has to be moved so we can pass cars through. And that's the end of our story. So boys and girls, I hope you learned some ways to stay safe during blizzards. Make sure you cover your face and your hands when you go outside so that you don't get frostbite. If your car gets stranded, make sure you stay in the car and call for help. Someone should find you if your car gets stuck. All right, so before we go, if you have your activity kit that I sent home with you, you will find a pack of hot chocolate in there. Go ahead and make yourself a nice warm cup of hot chocolate. And then you can sit down and make this short little craft while you drink your hot chocolate. So I made a snow globe and inside my snow globe, you can see my snowflakes. The instructions to make this snow globe with math sentence are on the outside of your activity kit. So go ahead, follow the directions, sip your hot chocolate and make your snow globe. I made one, two, three, four, five blue snowflakes. And I have one, two, three, four, five white snowflakes. So I have five plus five equals 10 snowflakes in my snow globe. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed our story time this week. I will see you next week and we will do more activities and read more stories. I hope you have a great week. Stay warm and enjoy the hot chocolate.